Jonathan. Something that I've heard my entire life is, when I was 10, people said, oh, the church is dying, it'll be dead in 10 years. And then 10 years later, oh, the church is dying, it'll be dead in 10 years time. And then you get, you get the idea. I don't think that's true. And then when I read your report at the end of the conference agenda number 61, I was really moved to see what you had to write. It was really honest and heartfelt. What have you got to say? Well, they're right in the wrong, aren't they? That actually, uh, over the last 50 years and longer, indeed, we've seen numerical decline. But what we've also seen is a huge number of signs of hope. Um, uh, about the church and actually at the point I was making the report about a broader Methodist family that uh, you know, we, what we're doing is we're finding our place again with our Methodist charities with All We Can uh, with the Methodist um, Help for the Aged uh, with, um, with Queen Victoria Siemens Rest that's changed its name uh, to emphasise its Methodist uh, position as a, as a mission to, to, to seafarers. Um, and also with our global Methodist partners and, and other bodies that bear the name Methodist. Um, I think, and when we combine that with our God for All strategy uh, and the work that we did this morning to accept our strategy for justice, uh, dignity and solidarity, what we're saying is we are the Methodist people, we are still here, we're not dead, uh, and we're proclaiming that the gospel is forever. What do you think are some of the real challenges that we're going to have to face? And you can, you can the, be honest. The, um, the real challenge is that uh, because we have had to struggle with decline uh, and um, because we have smaller numbers, we have a lot of people who are tired. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the pandemic has uh, made that much worse. It's been hard work to keep the life of the church going uh, uh, at this time. Um, we have an odd challenge around our financial resources. Uh, that because of this, the smaller numbers, we need to do fewer things. Uh, we have a, a, a smaller base contributing uh, into uh, our, the collection plate, and therefore we need to reduce the assessment. We've also now got a lot of historic assets, um, but they are unevenly distributed. And one of the challenges that's in the report that I presented to the conference this morning is to say, are we able to use some of the money that is in one place in order to pay for ministry to make a difference in another. Something about Peter and Paul is a phrase, isn't there? <laughs> and and it, fundamentally, it's actually about our connectionism. Yes. It's yes. about saying, uh, when we belong to a local Methodist church, we belong to Methodist Church in Britain. Yes. We are one family in this connection, and families assist each other. Absolutely, definitely. So, looking forward, what is the one take-home message or challenge that you would give to anyone who's listening, to, to Marjorie? What would you, what's your one take-home message? I would say rejoice in your Methodist identity. Yeah. Be glad that you're part of the Methodist Church uh, at this moment in time. And, um, and in doing that, one of the things that we've celebrated this week has been our Methodist way of life. Actually, how we live out our calling as individual disciples. So I'd say to, to Marjorie, find your Methodist way of life card and, and follow it. So the future is bright, the future is Methodist. That's a catchphrase. You're well, welcome, that's... you're welcome. <laughs> Jonathan, thank you so much no. for your time. Enjoy a break. I'm sure no. you, you absolutely deserve one after a very, very full conference. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank, thank you. you very much, Jay. Thank, thank you. you.